Okay, so this is the second example from our slides. And this one, if we look at the picture and think about the situation, it should look really similar to chapter three, projectile motion. And we probably remember that chapter three was one of the tougher ones from that first test. And there were a lot of different questions that we could ask using those projectile motion tools. Now, here in chapter seven with energy, there are a much smaller set of questions that we can ask about these kinds of situations because we can't ask anything about the vector information if we're using energy. But we can use energy to be able to do some much simpler uh, methods for the smaller subset of questions that we can ask about these situations. So for example, we can throw a two kilogram ball off a 20 meter tall building with an initial speed of 25 meters per second at a 60 degree angle. We want to find the speed the ball hits the ground using energy techniques. Now notice we're going to ask about the speed because we could not ask about the velocity. We won't be able to know at the end of the problem what angle the ball hits the ground with, but at least we'll know how fast it's going. So as with any problem that we do, the first thing we probably want to do is draw a picture of the situation. So we have our ball being shot off with an initial velocity. And although there is that 60 degree angle, that's probably not gonna mean anything to us if we start to realize that energy problems are not um, using vectors. So we have that um, initial velocity is 25 meters per second. And so we can um, have that be our initial beginning part of the problem. So this, is our before. Because at the end of the problem, when the ball has come back down again and hit the ground, it is moving with a different final speed that we don't know about, but that will be our after situation. Now, just like before, with our problems like this. Every single time we do an energy problem, we need to go through the process of asking ourselves those questions that we talked about in the first example and in the lecture slides. Are we moving? Are we higher? And later on in the chapter, we'll be asking other questions as well. But what we can do is right at the beginning of our setup, we can make that little chart that helps make sure that we've asked ourselves all of these questions. So with the kinetic energy question, when we ask ourselves, are we moving? We start by asking, are we moving at the start of the problem? Yes, so we should write 1 half m v initial squared. And then we ask ourselves, are we moving at the end of the problem? Yes, we are. That's what we are trying to find in this problem, the final velocity there final squared. All right, so the potential energy from gravity term, that's asking ourselves if we are higher at the beginning of the problem than we will at later points in the problem. The answer for that one is yes. And then when we ask ourselves if we're higher at the end of the problem than we were at other points in the problem, the answer is no. At this point, we don't have any other questions to ask. We will be eventually adding a question about springs, but there's no springs here. And then below all of that, because it is not a before or after question, we ask ourselves if there's a work term. Now, when we are trying to look for a work term, we are trying to see if there is an external push or a pull that we are talking about, uh, told about or if there's friction, or if there's air resistance, and we don't have any of those in this problem. So our answer to that question here is no. We have no work term. The reason we go through and ask ourselves all of those questions is because that allows us to know what terms are gonna go into our energy problem. Because every time that we set this up, it's energy before, plus work added, equals energy after. Okay. 
And so when we go through this, just like the first problem, we're taking the before column and we're saying, okay, that's what goes into energy before. One half mv initial squared plus mgh. Then for the work added term, since we said no, we can just add plus zero. And then for the energy after problem or term, we look at all of the terms in energy after and we write those. One half m the final squared plus zero. All right. So now that we have all of the terms, we see that there are three separate terms that aren't zero. We can start to plug in the numbers from the problem. So we have one half. The mass here is two. And then the initial velocity is 25. Then for this term, we have 2 times 9.8 times the height here uh, is 20 meters. So if we want to write that in, we can 20 meters times 20. And then we ignore the 0, and that's going to equal on this side 1 half times 2 times v final squared. Okay, so we can simplify this a bit. So first of all, for the first term there, we get 625. And that second term, we get 392. And then on the other side, 1 half times 2 is 1, and so we just have v final squared. Now we have to remember the squared is there because we can just take this whole thing, and once we add those together, we can take the square root of both sides, which means we'll have v final all by itself on the one side. And so we can take that total which is going to be 10, uh, 1,017, and we can take the square root of 1,017, and we'll get 31.9. And so our final velocity is 31.9 meters per second, and that becomes our answer. Now, for the check to make sure it makes sense to us, if we look, we launched it at 25 meters per second. It goes up in the air, and if we think back to chapter three, when it's at its maximum point, it stops moving briefly, then it will start to speed back up. And the key thing is when it gets back to that same spot, 20 meters above the ground, it'll be moving at 25 meters per second again, kind of sym symmetry in the problem. But since it's dropped further, it's had more time to speed up moving downwards, we do expect that our result is a bigger number than 25 meters per second. If it had landed at a higher point, if it had landed on top of a higher building, then we would have expected a smaller speed. But because we had two terms worth of energy that then all got put into one big term at the end, we are happy that we got that final velocity to be a bigger number. As always with these examples, and I'll try to say it every time, you can always go back and try this one again on your own and then rewatch this video and make sure it makes sense to you. Use these examples as much as you need to un until they make sense and all of the steps seem reasonable to us. All right, until the next one.